there, this is Tracy. I feel like it's been a while since I made a video. Sorry, everybody. Um, tonight I wanna to talk about you can't pick your family. And what I mean by this is actually not your family, um, but your in-laws. When we fall in love, we, we, we are, don't realize that we are marrying their family, right? Because all of a sudden there's gonna be like infighting over holidays and fighting about um, how to raise our children or when our vacations, like if, if we have children, both sides of the family are gonna want us for Thanksgiving or Christmas and, and, and it, it's gonna become something that you're going to spend a lot of time. Maybe like me, you'll go on lots of vacations with your in-laws. Um, my mother-in-law was by far a malignant narcissist, maybe sociopath. She was extremely scary and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this today and, and then I'm gonna talk about what you should do if you've married into a mother-in-law or a father-in-law that is a narcissist. So let me start with my examples because I think this will help you um, maybe connect to some of the pieces that might be happening in your life because we don't really, until we hear someone else say it, things start to click. And so I'll just start by saying that my, ex-husband's mother um, was extraordinarily close to my husband, not as much to his sister. Uh, this was his stepmother and she, um, when I first met her, she love-bombed me. I didn't know it then and I certainly didn't know it until a year ago when I started learning about narcissists. and. She would buy me things and um, just want to do in all these activities, these mother-daughter things and um, get our nails done together, go get massages together. And I thought it was just an endearing thing. I didn't realize it was all about control. And I didn't realize what she was doing, which was buying my love but even more than that, it was buying my loyalty because what I was about to find out was how batshit crazy the entire family was. I look at things that I thought that they were, right? Good family. I wanted a good family. I had a family that didn't see each other on holidays. I wanted a good family that loved each other and spent lots of time together. And so, they painted themselves, just like a narcissist does, into, morphs it into what I'm looking for. And so what the reality was, was that there was so much fighting within this family, I've never seen anything so crazy in my life. I used to go on vacations with them for two weeks and, and a week here and there, and at any given point, somebody was screaming at somebody. Usually it was the mother. She was screaming at the father. She belittled him. She, um, it, was, it was the most horrible thing to watch, the way she treated him. And then as soon as he would speak up, she would like, it was like this, this dragon coming down. And she would attack him and she would call him names and call him stupid and tell him that, that he wasn't capable of managing their estate you know, if she were to die because he was so irresponsible. So she was like putting him down, which is the devaluing, right? It's, it's, it's this psychological control. And then, you know, as soon as something bad would happen, just like in an abusive relationship, as soon as something bad would happen, like they would start the love bombing thing again to, to try to make you forget what you just seen, this crazy behavior. I remember one Thanksgiving, right? We were probably seating 20 people for dinner and the whole family was in the kitchen, chopping, 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 and, and we each had our little jobs we were in charge of. And like Thanksgiving in New England is, is pretty cold. And the father would like open the doors because all the ovens were on and 
a fly came in one year, <laughs> a fly in the kitchen. They had like 12 foot ceilings and the father goes and gets a can of Raid and sprays it all trying to get the bug off the ceiling. Well, all the Thanksgiving food is down below. Crazy shit. And the, the mother screaming, ah, blah, blah, blah. ugly, ugly. Um, but I also thought that they were very accepting. So we, I thought they were a good family, and clearly they weren't. Um, the fighting was, was the reality, but they were hiding it from me. I thought they were very accepting of me. You see, I was different. I was not the debutante, and um, I was acceptable to the mother. Apparently, he had been in another relationship, and um, the mother didn't approve of that person and made him leave her. So... Knowing that, I'm pretty sure I know what happened with me as well. Mommy didn't like that I found out about the mask. But um, they were accepting, and then they weren't. They were trying to change me. They complained about the way I ate. I'm sorry, but I'm well into my life, and if I don't like fish, I don't like fish. They wanted me to see a, a food psychologist. They were trying to make me crazy. There's nothing wrong with the way I eat. Each one of them had their own little things they didn't like, but it was not acceptable that I didn't like fish. I don't know why it bothered them, but this was like a red flag. Why wasn't it a red flag? This was a red flag that they didn't approve of me, and they were judging me and belittling me for eating differently than them. They weren't like crazy good eaters, they were stupid eaters. Um, if it cost money, it was worth it. It was something they liked. You know, truffles or this or that. Quail eggs. Who takes quail eggs on a plane? That's just freaking weird. Anyway, um, so I saw the mask fall in the most horrendous way. And uh, we were on vacation um, in Argentina and the airlines were going to go on strike. And we were taking one plane to another location, um, Bar Loche, and um, we were stuck in the airport waiting to find out if the airlines were going on strike. And so um, I, I put something on my Facebook wall and just said, you know, oh gosh, please don't let the airlines go on strike. Well, they were such terrible liars. They had lied to their entire family. Um, you know, the dad's entire family, they pretended they were poor. There was just like all of this stuff that I was having to cover. But when I made that Facebook post, it was like, you've never seen anything like this in your life. My father-in-law lost it. He was screaming at the top of his lungs at me in a hotel room, telling me that I ruined their life. Explain to me how I could ruin their life by posting that I don't want the airlines to go on strike and I didn't say where I was. I had to pretend I wasn't in Argentina, um, but that was a lie that they were making me keep. So in order to keep me, they were, they were deliberately trying to buy me and buy me with love and buy me with things. And, and I'm not saying I was a gold digger, but the father called me a gold digger that day because of the Facebook post. That's when the mask fell. That's when he couldn't pretend that he loved me. Like it was this bizarre thing. And, and 24 hours later, it, it was like nothing happened. And that was just weird. That was crazy ass weird. They had a grandfather pretend person that used to come with us and he would like slap the sister in the middle of a five-star restaurant and scream on the streets as he was walking along that he wanted his passport back and he wanted to go home and um, he would be yelling at them. So this was the crazy behavior. All right, sorry, I, I tend to go off a little. All right, so here's what you're going to do. If you have married into a family of crazy, First of all, put up boundaries. No, I'm not going to lie for you. That would have been a good boundary. No, even though I would say over and over, no, I don't want Prada shoes. No, I don't want whatever you're trying to buy me. Um, 
I didn't stick my boundaries enough because then they would sneak it in and I'd have to accept. Um, but my boundaries were not comfortable and I didn't stick up for myself. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do because look at what they're doing that's bad and then look at how it makes you feel and set a boundary. If they decide to just pop over to your house and expect you to drop everything or see your children, set a boundary. If you don't set a boundary, there's no one to blame but yourself. And if your husband or your wife doesn't respect that boundary as a couple, you're in trouble because like my husband was mama's boy. And you know, if I even thought of disobeying mom or not being the, the dutiful daughter-in-law, if I spoke up, if I made friends with the aunts and the uncles that they were lying to, they didn't like it. So set your boundaries, most important, and do not, do not accuse your mother-in-law of being a narcissist. That is when the mask is gonna fall. They're gonna freak out. They don't wanna be confronted with this, nor does any other narcissist, right? But you have to learn the red flags. If you don't learn the red flags and see these behaviors, like I didn't see these things, I was in it. I was living this and I did not see what they were doing to me. Now that I see the red flags, it would never happen to me again. So I encourage you, set good boundaries, discuss them with your husband, and not only set the boundaries in your mind, but tell your in-laws, this is what I will tolerate. This is not acceptable, and I'm not gonna come to your house on Thanksgiving if you treat me like that. Whatever it is, if you don't set the boundaries, you're gonna be in trouble. So take care of yourself and make sure that you work this all together as a family. Be careful of accusing them of being a narcissist because we know they won't like that and I don't want them to lash out at you any worse than they already do. This is Tracy and that is all I have. Thank you.